Hey kids, what's going on? It's time for us to close out our last round of rhyme videos. Uh, Cause I know we're coming close to the end of the first quarter and after the first quarter comes the first benchmark. And in the first benchmark, you're gonna have all of your life sciences. So you'll have your ecosystems that we've learned about. You'll have the unicellular, multicellular organisms that we've already studied together during rhyme. You'll have your body systems and you'll have genetics, which is what we're gonna go over today. And genetics is actually probably the easiest of all of the things, but we're gonna go through some things. So by the time we get done with this, hopefully you can identify the difference between acquired trait, inherited trait, and learned behaviors. We're gonna skip over a little bit of this because this is what we're gonna do in class when we get towards the end of the year. Um, but again, genetics, uh, humans and other animals, we are basically a mixture of our parents. We get some traits from our mom, some traits from our dad, those kind of blend together to make us the unique person that we are. Genetics uh, is a study, and it's the study of the traits and the behaviors, how we inherit things, how we inquire different things. It could be from eye color to scars. Those are different things that might happen genetically. Heredity. Wow, I look kind of weird with this background. Heredity is the passing on of these traits. Again, um, it's from parents to offspring, and offspring is just a fancy term for the kids. So you get certain things from your mom and your dad. I am like all up in the way on this one now. So what are traits? Traits are these special characteristics that get passed on from the parents to the offspring. And that could be animals. That could be plants as well. If you're talking eye color, you're looking at hair color, the shape of a flower, the color of the flower, the color of the fur, the shape of an animal, how tall, how short it is. And those different types of things are passed on from the parent to the offspring. Again, you would not expect to see two cats even if the cat was black one was black and one was brown you would not expect for them to have long floppy bunny ears because that's not a trait that cats typically have and so it's it's pretty easy to kind of look at things and figure out what type of traits that you might get skipping past some of these and genes we're not going to dig too deep into genes um because genes are they determine what gets passed on so inside of your body um, is the DNA, which is inside the genes, and it tells you if you're going to have blue eyes or green eyes. It's going to tell you if you're going to have curly hair or straight hair. Now, again, I do know that you can take a curler or a straightener and do things to your hair, and we'll get to that later on. But it just kind of gives you an idea of what you would look like. Chromosomes, not going to dig too deep into that because um, although they are inside of your cells um, and they're made up of DNA. Um, they are kind of like a recipe. And I don't know if I attached that video that talks about how you can look into a recipe book to put together certain things. And like many, many things that you might make in a recipe could call for uh, different ingredients like maybe salt and pepper. But that doesn't mean that everything that you make is going to be exactly the same. It just has some similarities in that. And when you're putting all of these chromosomes together, uh, you're going to get some things that might be similar, but uh, and, and they'll, be, they'll be very unique in their cells as well. Dominant versus recessive genes. Dominant versus recessive genes. So if you were to look at somebody who has brown eyes, they have a dominant gene. Brown eyes is a dominant gene. If that gene gets passed on, and again, you can watch the Mendel video that we posted about genes and how they get passed on. That's not super, super important. Just understanding that um, a dominant gene is always going to show itself if you happen to have um, that gene. You would have to, have, if you have any, like, if you have the brown eye gene, you're going to have brown eyes. Even if you have the blue eye gene as well, the brown eye gene is dominant. It's more powerful. It's going to show itself. You would have to have two small Bs, two blue eyes. So if you have blue eyes, you have a recessive gene and the chances of you passing that on to your kids, it's possible, especially if you marry someone that also has uh, blue eyes. But if you happen to have, uh, if you marry someone with brown eyes, then the odds of them getting blue eyes uh, reduces drastically. And we'll go over how to do the math portion of all of this stuff inside the Punnett squares, because it is kind of fun. But right now you just need to understand there's two types of genes, dominant and recessive. The dominant gene, this one that you look at here, is more strong. It's always going to show itself. And the recessive gene 
is the weaker of the genes, and it's only going to show itself if it happens to be paired up with another recessive gene. Do you have to know all of the dominant and recessive genes? No, we're not really stressing that right now. Skip past. Inherited traits. Wow, I'm like hanging out with LL Cool J. I'm going to scoot myself over just a little bit. There we go. Um, inherited traits. These are the kind of things that you would probably get from your parents. So when you're talking about your eye color, you inherited that from your parents. Now, I'm not talking to someone that puts in contact lenses to change the color of their eyes. Your natural eye color is something that you got from your parents. Now you might say, but both of my parents have brown eyes and I have blue eyes. How did I get that from my parents? And again, we will dig a little deeper into the mathematics behind how you can actually pass things on from your um, from parents to the child. But again, your eye color comes from your parents. Even if you have blue eyes, you did not inherit that just from some random person. You got it from your parents. Your skin color also comes from your parents. And I'm not too sure what happened to my picture. Um, it just kind of disappeared. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Let's keep on going on. Again, your skin color is something that you inherit from your parents. You get your skin color from your parents. It's an inherited trait. Your hair color, whether you have black hair, brown hair, red hair, blonde hair, you got that from your parents. But, Mr. Bullens, both of my parents have brown hair. How do I have blonde or red hair? Again, we can get into um, how that happens when we actually really start digging super deep into genetics. But right now, we're just getting kind of a surface level thing. So when you're taking the benchmark and you see a question about inherited traits, it's not something that's brand new to you. You've at least heard it, and you probably will remember most of that. Whether you have curly hair or straight hair, we are not talking about you got up in the morning and put a curling iron in your hair. I'm talking like just naturally curly hair, naturally straight hair. That is something that you inherited from your parents. Dimples. Now, you may be wondering what are dimples. If you smile and your cheeks indent like LL Cool J's do here, then you have dimples. That is something that is inherited from your parents. It is passed on from the parents to the offspring of the child. Freckles, if you have freckles, that is something that is inherited as well. How tall you are, how tall you are, your height is inherited from your parents. You get a little bit, for, again, from both parents, and that is going to determine how tall you're gonna be. Are there other factors that can help how tall someone might grow? Absolutely. But as a majority thing we're going to look at, we're going to talk about inherited traits. Now, these next two things might be uh, something you've never heard of. I'm pretty certain we have some slides to look at exactly what those are. But attached versus detached earlobes is an inherited trait. Your widow's peak is an inherited trait. Your bone structure is an inherited trait. Your nose shape comes from your parents. How you clasp your hands, and we'll go over that in class, but if you just naturally put your hands together like your fingers are interlocked, you either have your right thumb or your left thumb over top of the other. That is something that's actually inherited. Uh, and again, we'll go over that a little bit more in detail when we actually study this in class in the fourth quarter, but it is something that's very neat. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, I don't know if I got to uh, keep that video in. I know all the videos that I had were well over an hour, and so obviously it's not going to work in Ron. That's only an hour. So um, if we didn't go over the left-handed, right-handed thing, I'll try to make sure we get to do that when we go over inherited traits. So again, if you're jotting down notes, which you should be, inherited traits are the things that you get from your parents. This is not everything. This is just a simple list, believe it or not, of the things that you get from your parents Now, attached versus detached earlobes. You can see, again, you know what an earlobe is. See how this one is attached to the skin of the face? See how this one is detached right here? It's like detached from the skin of the face. All right, so again, that is something that is inherited from your parents. That's probably something you really haven't looked at a whole lot on yourself because it's kind of hard to look at your ears. But you can go and take a look at that. I don't know that you're really going to see anything about attached or detached earlobes, 
But just in case, there they are. A widow's peak. Do you see this V shape here? How it comes down like this and goes up like this, this V shape. This is um, something that you get from your parents. Um, and again, does everyone have a widow's peak? Of course not. I'll be shocked if many of us in fifth grade actually have that. It's not something you see very often. Um, I won't be surprised if we have a few people. But again, a widow's peak, that V shape toward the center of your forehead, is something that comes from your parents. A cleft chin. If you see, now this, again, this is like a ridiculous version of it. Um, but if you see this, um, like a dimple in the chin, uh, that is something that usually comes from the parents. Learned behaviors. Now, let's think about that. These are, again, this is like one of those like salt water or fresh water definitions. What are learned behaviors? These are behaviors that you have learned. So again, learned behaviors are not hard. Reading, writing, talking, walking, riding a bike, using a computer, playing different types of sports are all things that you have learned to do. You were not born knowing how to read. You're not born knowing how to write. It's something that you learned. I don't think it's very hard to understand the concept of learned behaviors. Think about it. Brown hair, can you learn that? No, you cannot. You cannot learn to have brown hair. You can go acquire it if you dye your hair, if your hair is not naturally brown, but that's typically an inherited trait. Can you learn how to be seven foot tall? No, or most of us would learn how to be seven foot tall and make millions in the NBA. That's not a learned behavior. Can you learn how to play chess? Yes, that is something you can learn how to do. Learned behaviors. Pretty easy on, learn, on, learn, on learned behaviors. Just think about it. Is that something I could learn? Answer the question. If it's something you learn how to do, it's a learned behavior. If it's not, then it's going to be acquired or inherited traits. What are acquired traits? Acquired traits are things that happen after you are born due to the environment. This young lady right here did not was not born with rainbow hair. That was something that she acquired. Now, whether that's her hair or a wig, I have no idea, but either way, she acquired it. She got it after she was born, whether she had her hair dyed or she put on a wig. A tattoo, you're not born with tattoos. Just because your mom and dad both have tattoos does not mean that you were born with tattoos. That's not how that works. That's something that you get after you were born. If your dad had a bike accident when he was like eight and he has a scar on his knee, that scar is not something that's going to get passed on to you. Scars are not inherited. Scars are acquired. They happen to you after you are born. Now, this next one can get a little tricky. Hairstyle. Hairstyle. I'm not talking about black hair, brown hair, blonde hair. I'm talking about how you style your hair. Do you comb it to the side? Do you comb it straight back? Do you put a lot of gel in it? Do you put a curling iron in your hair this morning or a straightener? That is the style of your hair. Your muscle size. Now, that one is a little, it's, it's a really kind of a tough one um, because if you have genetically fit parents that can get passed on to you, the ability to get big, but you cannot get big muscles without working out. And so you're not just born ripped. You have to work out. Again, I know I have that on, on my finger um, where I hold my pencil. There's a callus, like a rough spot. That is something that happened to me after I was born. Acquired traits. Here's some videos here that we might need to watch during class. More videos. Yep. And even more videos. And last but not least, with 30 seconds to go, we're going to cover something called an instinct. Many, many, many of the animals that we have studied in the ecosystems have instincts. They have the instinct of how to hunt. That is something that's not necessarily learned. It's kind of done automatically. Ducks swimming, something that they do automatically. Birds flying, it's something that's done automatically. It's it's something that's born inside of you that you already know how to do that you do not have to learn. All right, kiddos, that is a super brief, super quick overview of genetics. Hopefully some of that stinks in. 
Smash the like button and subscribe.